Right, so what we're going to do with these is I've just got in the back so far and I'm going to bed some slips into these. Obviously that one there is a full brick. But uh, the reason that I'm only doing slips is because these go through and they tie all this together. Um, so I don't really want to be disturbing it because there's quite a few of them there. I mean, what, one, two, three, four. So that's four structural bits that are sort of weakened. Um, so yeah, we'll just put a little slip in there, which uh, you shall see in a bit. And there's the, uh, the little brick slips um, that I've cut. Now these are cut out to some of the original bricks that were scrap um, because can you see all this this patterning and the marks etc in it if you look at these these are what we're trying to match up that's why I chose to use some of the uh, the off cuts um, to match it in because there is quite a few of them next to each other and I don't want them looking you know too new obviously so what we do now we uh, we bed them in with a bit of lime mortar which you shall see now. This is the mortar that uh, I'm going to use for laying the brick. Now, as you can see down there, there's lime putty, and this is a, a fine yellow sand which is very similar to this, which was uh, beet sand. Now, the reason that I'm using this particular aggregate is because um, we're trying to match what the original build was done with. And that's the nearest we can get. It's a riverbed sand, it's washed, so with no danger of salts. Now the original was beach sand, and obviously I don't want to be using beach sand and introducing salt into the building. Um, however, the pointing, that'll be done with the uh, CLM35. Um, so it's, uh, it's a lot coarser the material than, uh, than the bedding mortar that I'm using. Right, just thought we'd clear that one up. As if by magic, there's the mortar. Very nice. What we're going to do now is we're going to put these slips in. Of course, they're nice and wet. Put some on the back of the brick. We'll leave that there for a minute. Water is uh, quite wet purposely. It's basically because I'm sticking these slips in rather than bedding them. It's a bit like sticking a tire on, I suppose. Whenever you're doing these, make sure you've covered all that brickwork that you're going to stick to. Because you're gluing them in, don't forget. Now you wouldn't know that that there has been changed. Once that's dry and pointed in, you'll never notice it. And it still leaves these intact to tie those two walls together. You can actually do a similar thing if you're doing an archway. You can't or you don't want to, to build arch formers and change the bricks etc. You can actually, if you if you cut it with a grinder, cut slots into it, and then cut it back carefully, you can then bed a slip onto it. But if you're going to do that, I'd use something probably like an epoxy resin rather than lime. Just so you know it's got all. I mean, these will hold because they, you know, they're basically sat. You know, if you're doing it off, she's looking underneath it. I've got one round the corner to do. It's in the arch. So we'll uh, probably have a look at that later. Oops. I'll need a clean.
Hey, what's this live set? These these will last for donkey's years. And you can actually do a similar thing with stone. You can basically cut a, a thin strip like a veneer of it and uh, stick it to the damaged stone. Obviously you've got to cut it back and, and source it first. But again if you're doing it to stone you'd be looking at using an epoxy resin rather than a lime mortar. The reason for this is because it basically gets all of it better than lime. stainless steel pins into it with uh, epoxy as well. I mean we did a windowsill recently, I had to put a piece on the end of it and uh, we just basically glued it together and put a, a stainless steel pin in it. I don't think I filmed that though. It was one of those days where it didn't film. It still happens sometimes. So what we do now, we just let that set in a little bit. There you go, you can see them. Now don't worry about that bit we've got on the brake there. That's not a problem. Once it's dried in a bit, we'll clean that off. It's uh, maybe been a wet mortar, it's not as controllable. Right, so what we've got to do next, is just put one brick in there, which is a new brick. Um, I'm not too bothered about a full brick there. wind's getting up again. It never seems to stop here. Yep, firming up nicely already then. That's good. And that, people, is how you get away with a header running through that you need to replace. Just cut it back, put a slip, put it in. And it'll last years. You don't need to worry. It's had, a, it's had a good wet up before. This water's a little bit runny for doing this. It's alright for the, uh, the slips, but not for this. But we'll put a bed on, just leave it a minute just to suck in. Let's see if we can get this for you now. Not dropping it. Oh, it's down. Need the packing. A bit of lime water there. That's got it. She's in. Tickle her forward. And again, let that dry in, scrape out this uh, bedding mortar and point up with the um, CLM. There we go. That's those uh, little brick slips. Hard to tell which ones they were now. Um, that one. And that one, etc. It's uh, worked out nice. I mean, a, a blind man on a fast horse going past will never notice them. Which is good, that's what we want. 
Right, just got a couple of little bits down there to do. Um, and then I think I'll have to chase a bit more out on here. I've seen a couple of pieces, just sort of like here, where they're uh, not looking so clever. There's a bit there. Apart from that, we're nearly done on this lift, which isn't bad. That's, that's taken the day. So we can drop down tomorrow onto the next. Fab. Right, so what's this? This is your burnt sand. Okay, as you can see it's a very fine dusty sand. So what we're going to do, we're going to get some of this, which is linseed oil. But it's double boiled linseed oil. And we put some of the linseed oil into the tub. And then what we do, we add the sand. So it's a bit like making a mortar with oil, I suppose. But uh, this stuff is what we used to use as we were sealing between, say, a wooden window frame or a wooden door frame outside, um, between the stone or the brick and the wood. So you get your, your sand in there, make sure it's filled and covered it all, because you don't want it wet. And then, of course, you give it a good mixing in. And then once it's mixed in, that's your uh, burnt sand mastic produced. Now this is a dark brown, this one. You can get it in red, you can get it in white, uh, I've seen it in black and grey. But I prefer the dark brown because it doesn't stand out as much as the red. And obviously it matches the brickwork better. And I'm going to use this to go around the um, steel window frames um, that we've restored the brickwork on. And I'll demonstrate how it's done later on. And there you have it. It's now been mixed in with the oil. You don't want it too wet. If it's too wet, it'll just like slump on you. Um, so it wants to be, well, not I wouldn't say dry, but it wants to be firm. A bit like putty, I suppose. And then you get a nice smooth finish on it. Right, so that's your burnt sand mastic. Now... <clears throat> If you're going to use it, a little uh, word of advice. If you're treading some, whatever you do, don't go in the house and walk on the carpet in your boots because you'll get shouted at because it'll, uh, it'll stain and destroy everything. Um, don't eat it because it'll give you the shits because it's linseed oil. And... Try not to get it all over like paths and things like that and tread it in because it, it, it is dirty, horrible stuff. So you've got to be careful with it. Make sure you sheet everything up below you, etc. I mean, I'm not too bad on it because there's nothing below me. Um, but yeah, right, so there you go. Burnt sand mastic. The traditional way of sealing between a wood, metal, stone, brick.
Right, well that's the burnt sand mastic done now. So they're good and sealed. And you can see there where we did the uh, new piece of stone. That's all sealed in as well now. So they're good to go for winter. Mm. Right, so I'm going to now nip to the uh, merchants and um, get some wire wool. So I'm just going to wire wool these uh, window frames. Uh, they're not true lead lights, this is just that stuff that's stuck on. So I'm going to give them a wire wool and then we're going to paint the frames black. And then we're kind of done in this area. Um, saying that, I've still got that to, to do something with, but uh, that won't take long. But yeah, the great unveiling. And we've got both windows done now with the mastic. <coughs> and you can see the stone that we uh, faced up the other day, well, earlier on last week. That's now dried and looking a lovely. Colour match is nice too. Yeah, you can just see it from the ground now, this, and it does look uh, excellent. Which is good. I've still got to do a bit more on some hand yet. When I get time. I'm just trying to get some of the bits out of the way. Um, so probably, I just went and had a wander around. I've probably got two days left um, on the pointing. And then I'm into snagging. There's a couple of bricks to put in. I've already taken the old ones out. So it's just a case of bedding bricks in. Uh, a couple of little bits and pieces here and there that have been missed. Um, which I'll, uh, I'll put some stuff in and then we're up top uh, jointing up all the stonework um, which is going to involve ropes and ladders as well scary but uh, it's got to be done I was all, I'm sort of hoping that the scaffolding would go all the way up there but uh, it's not done okay right off to the merchants we'll see you in a bit Right, I'm armed with wire wool. Give all these a good scrubbing off. What it will do, it will get rid of all the bits of lime that have uh, fallen onto the glass throughout the project and it'll clean the lid up. So when it's all painted up, it'll look uh, prestige and new. You know, it's just a little bit of effort and uh, it looks so much better, so much neater. It does go that extra mile, you know. I mean, they'll soon go dirty and black, but uh, at least when I've finished it, it'll look nice. Right, open it up, move the inside. to go up top now to uh, to get the top of them because I can't reach down it yet. <sighs> oh, terrible filming. It's kind of leaning over a big gap there. Right well we'll go up to the next lift now. We'll do the tops and then it's operation painting because it's just galvanized steel at the minute and it is in place it's just starting to get a little bit of rust on it. So uh, We'll give it a coat of the black paint, same stuff we're using for the clocks, and uh, they'll look splendid. A police incident down there this morning, police everywhere, never seen so many police cars in one place. I think there might be some there, some armed policemen maybe, I know there's some dog unit there as well. Oh, uh, somewhat exciting. Right. Oh, 
Yeah, well, we'll come back to you because it's impossible with one hand this. So, uh, we can have a look in a minute. Right, well, they've come up a treat. Absolutely lovely. Not washing them, so there's going to be dust and stuff on them, but uh, there's no marks as such. And the lead's cleaned up. Right, paint next. And they are, I think, true lead light as well. Um, I don't think it is the old um, stick on stuff. I think it's a, a real lead light, which makes it even uh, more worth cleaning up. Right, and we need to go down again now. This uh, has its ups and downs, this job. But uh, I think that uh, we may just paint the bottom first and then come up and paint the tops. With there being two windows, because it's a bit of a pain up and down. Oh, especially through that opening, it's not very big. Not that I'm flat or anything, it's just that it's a small opening. Right, now this is the paint that we're going to use. It's uh, really good stuff, it's the same stuff that I used on the clock, it has a nice shine to it and it uh, protects the metal. Let's do it. The old masking tape, just to put between the uh, frame and the glass. Um, if you always don't want to get any paint on it. You know, I am quite delicate when it comes to painting and can cut it quite well, but uh, it's a damn sight easier and quicker if it's masked off. So I'll spend the next hour now trying to find the end of the tape, which is uh, normal when you're using masking tape. Ah, there it might be there. Got it. There we go. Right, we have to be quiet now because we've got a little funeral service thing going on down below. So we'll have to shh, be quiet. It's a cellulose base paint this, um, so it'll be dry within an hour. So I'll probably give it another coat, so there are two good coats on them there. Right, going over there to do the other one. Well, I think they're going to look quite nice when they're, uh, when they're finished. I'm sure we'll need a nice new brickwork and point and etc. around them. It's so much better from down there. It was looking tatty, I've got to admit. And I hope that the, uh, the group that looks after the church are, uh, are happy with it too. A lot of effort's gone into uh, getting this section um, restored and preserved. Right, there we go. All painted. Let's give it an hour and peel that tape off, that masking tape. And uh, job done. I've done the internal bit as well. 
and round the opener so they're, uh, they're well protected now from the weather. That's the second one. It's going to look quite splendid. Huge, huge improvement. And there we go. That's pretty much the end of this week's video. I'm going to cut it short. It's only Thursday. Um, because I won't be on site tomorrow because of the weather. It's forecast 60 mile an hour winds and torrential rain. Yep. I don't fancy being up a scaffold in a 60 mile an hour winds. Um, done all right this week, got a fair bit done. So I'm not too bothered um, about not having a day here. Right, so what have we got done today? Well, painting. Nothing more, just painting. Oh, did the um, burnt sand mastic as well. I've painted the two windows, as you've seen. And what you haven't seen is I've painted the second clock. Now I didn't bother filming that because um, who wants to see me painting a clock? You know, let's face it, it's it's boring. I was bored doing it. So I'm sure you'd be bored watching me being bored doing it. Right, as usual, if you've enjoyed this week's video, please give us a big thumbs up. Uh, it really helps the channel to grow, apparently. The more people that give thumbs up, the more YouTube put it out there. And the more they put it out there, the more people see the channel, and the more people subscribe. And the more people that subscribe, the bigger the channel gets. And the bigger it gets, the more I can cover, the more we can do. Because that's what it's all about. It's all about entertaining you. And giving you some hints and tips on how to look after these old buildings. If you subscribed recently, thank you. Really do appreciate it. We do try and entertain on this channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to do so. We like fresh subscribers. We do. Um, no comments uh, to speak this week. Um, so everybody must have been um, fully informed of what we were doing because nobody's asked any questions and I do like questions uh, so if anybody's got a question feel free to put it in the comments section um, you could hit the bell so you can see what's coming up and that's it that's all nothing more for you I've come down off the scaffolding now, it's 4.30. I've been up there since, um, what time did I go back up? About one o'clock. So I've come down, I've poured a cup of tea and I'm gonna have a minute and then I'm gonna pack up um, because I'm not doing any uh, line pointing uh, today because it's um, what I class as a drying wind. Uh, basically, it's very windy up there and it's very warm and it's a warm wind. So it'll be drying the line out too fast. It's going to take too much controlling um, in weather like that. Hence me going on the painting today. Because paint likes warm weather. It dries. Right, that's it. I'll stop waffling on now and let you get on with your tea. And we shall see you next week for another episode of Messing About on this old church. <laughs>